So in today's video, I'm going to drop some hard truths that we as landscape photographers will all have to learn. It'll be raw, uncut, organic, just as you love it. Well, <laughs> it's, it will be cut, don't worry, because you want that. But let's just dig into it. No intro, no nothing. <laughs> it's really it's really not working for me, this uncut stuff. So, but the first truth that I, at the very least, had to learn, that is that simply not all people will love what you do. You cannot satisfy everyone. And it's actually rather liberating when you not sure which way to go when you figure this thing out and accept that the kind of landscape photography that you end up doing that you end up liking it's it's not for everyone you will hear a lot of criticism in this space a lot of like oh that's an iconic shot oh that's over photographed but if you like it yourself that's the most important so you cannot satisfy everyone that is also a good thing because it makes sure that we create a lot of different photographs so we get a varied landscape photography space and i highly appreciate that so i'm actually out scouting a location i've wanted to see for a long while today spring is where we are now in may and Spring is just not coming. We have a little bit of spring, but April has just been so cold and so dry. So I guess that delays like the blooming of everything. We do have like, you know, dandelions and anemones and stuff all around, but generally, whew, it's just been cold. And I'm really looking forward to spring. But yeah, new location. Want to check it out because I have some ideas that I want to do this summer. Uh, and then, yeah, I need to go explore first. The next hard truth we just have to learn to accept as landscape photographers is that it is not, not always the best photograph that actually sells. It is not always the technically perfect photograph that wins competitions. And it's not always... <coughs> Oh, this is raw. This is uncut. <laughs> that was a fly. Oh, oh dear. So much for the uncut part. But yeah, it's not always the technically best photo that wins competitions. It's not always the best photo that sells. And it is not always your deep, deep, fine art, beautiful black and white photograph that does the best on Instagram. Different photos works in different settings differently. And that is just a huge part of being a landscape photographer is to identify when a certain photo works great for what. Like many of my most popular photos on Instagram never sold a single print of them. Whereas some of my more like, you know, this photo is great, but it's not like super great. It sells simply just because it's a photo of something people want to buy. <laughs> so truth of the matter is that it is not always the technically best photo that wins in whatever field it's in. Another good one that we also have to accept, which is kind of in line with the previous one, is that Effort is highly, highly overrated in landscape photography. You can put in the biggest effort in the world. You can climb to the top of Mount Everest and you can still take a bad photo. Like it would require a lot of effort for me to go all the way to the US, fly over there, rent a car, drive all the way to Yosemite Valley and take that iconic shot of the valley view in Yosemite. However, those people who live there, the chance is that they with much less effort can get much better photos, simply just because they have a bigger chance of actually getting the better photo. 
So it's more about luck and where you actually live close to an icon. So I would have to work even more for it and spend even more resources to get that same photo. And truth is, nobody cares. So now that I'm walking around in this location, there's just so many compositions that pop out to me and I'm like, yeah, this will look cool in these and these conditions. And if you want to learn about composition landscape photography, I have links to my two eBooks down in the description. They're my two best selling products. And I highly, highly appreciate all of you who have got those eBooks. They are all about composition all the basic techniques of composition, how I use them in the field, share my thoughts, I share my approach, workflow, all that good stuff. So they're super easy to read. There is, there is text, but I really want to like get to the core of it. And I show a lot of examples. There's so many photos in those eBooks. So they are very easy to understand and apparently people are very happy about them. Uh, got really good reviews. So check them out down in the description. So another thing that you just have to accept is that you might have an idea, you might have a vision, or you might just want to go out and take a lot of photographs. But you will fail and you will fail and you will fail again and again and again and again and again. And that's part of the learning process. But even now, with so many years of experience, I still fail. And I fail again and again and again. Miss focus, parts of the photo is out of focus. It's shaken due to wind, all that stuff. You're not capturing that moment when it occurs in front of you. But as I said, it's part of the learning experience and you just have to accept it. But it's also like, you know, it's a good thing and you have an excuse to get out one more time and try again. Another truth that you also just have to accept, which kind of goes along with one of the earlier ones I talked about, is that if you want to earn money from landscape photography, you will have to learn about business, business strategies, how to sell yourself, how to build up a brand, all those things. You might be the best photographer in the world, but even so, you will still need to build up a kind of brand. Like Ansel Adams would not be Ansel Adams without his business guy. So yeah, it's, it's just about learning a little bit of business alongside with learning landscape photography. And the sooner you get started, the earlier you can start actually earning from your landscape photography. So I definitely think that there is some potential here at this location. You can see it's like a heath area. I have a lot of heather all around. It will look beautiful in autumn. I have some silver birches and a lake here. So definitely has potential. Not entirely sure it has potential for what I wanted it to be and do. But nevertheless, I think this place can look really, really beautiful in a few months. So the last hard truth we all need to accept at some point in our landscape photography career is that it just takes time. Time and experience to grow. Time and experience to become better time and experience to build up your portfolio, there are no overnight sensations. It takes hard work and loads of it. Also, it just takes time to know you, like learn all the techniques, learn all the technicals, learn whatever it is you want to do, get to know yourself, figure out what makes sense for you as a landscape photographer, as an individual. Where do you want to take your landscape photography? To begin with, we have a tendency to copy what's already out there. That's part of the journey. But you just have to spend time figuring out what part of landscape photography that really speaks to you. And it takes time 
to dig through so many different opinions on the internet and figure out which one that is worth listening to and which ones that you can like, you know, ignore. So time and experience, no shortcuts, work for it. So yeah, check out the links to the ebooks in the description if you want to learn how I edit my photos. You can also sign up for my huge post-processing course. There's also a discount code for that down in the description. So I think that was, that was everything. So if you enjoyed this video, I would highly appreciate a like. And yeah, share some more hard truths down in the comments. I'm curious to see if you have learned something that you think that everybody else also should learn. So yeah, thank you for watching.